Hi, my name is Maggie LaPre. I belong to a small group and I've been asked to share my missional experiences. I would prefer to call these opportunities just simple expressions of kindness, helpfulness, and thoughtfulness. Simply put, just saying yes, Lord, to opening my eyes and ears and placing my feet exactly where you want me to be, extending your loving kindness and hope to those you bring to me today. Tuesday, February 23rd, I went to my last morning Pilates class. Afterwards, I planned on making a quick trip to Pasadena to check out some new fabric for the cushions on our patio furniture. This was going to be a quick 15 minute decision. Today was different. I located a salesman that had done business, I had done business with before, and he set me up at a table to look at two books of fabrics I could choose from. I would say within a 10 minute time frame, the fabric was chosen and we were signing a contract. As we were sitting next to each other, finishing up business and helping each other with our iPhones, I mentioned what a glorious day it was and hoped he could go outside and enjoy God's beautiful weather. I then somehow mentioned that not only was I celebrating California weather, but that 10 years ago, this June, I was diagnosed with cancer and I was embracing every day and every opportunity to share my love with my Lord Jesus and his life he has given me cancer free. My salesman began to immediately wipe tears from his eyes and continued weeping unapologetically. He then asked if I would follow him to the outside courtyard. We both picked up our personal belongings and proceeded to the outside under a shade tree. I continued to share the darkest time of my life. He began to share the moments of his younger years. Homelessness, parenting challenges, uncertainty and unemployment, just expressing the complexities of living life. He still was weeping and I just sat and I listened. I needed to assure him that he was not alone. Everyone is looking for hope and solutions for whatever situation they are facing or enduring that someone out there cares. I then mentioned once again my cancer. The word cancer still grips my heart, but I do know that the days and years I have ahead of me are planned and covered with the blood of Jesus. I do know what is fulfilling to me is hearing is learning to first go to the Lord and depend on His wisdom rather than being self-reliant. And my 15 minute trip ended up being 90 minutes of us sharing. We both stood up to hug and say goodbye and then I asked if I could pray for him. And he very quickly sat down and we bowed our heads and I asked the Lord to make himself very real and approachable to my new friend. He also shared about the, asked about the church that I attended and we both helped each other on our iPhones to be familiar with the website. We will see each other again. Wednesday, February 24th, I'm enjoying having a manicure and I'm fully aware my manicurist is preoccupied in thought. She shares with me her older sister is going through some intensive testing for cancer. I do know she, like me, is a cancer survivor. I asked if she would like our Bible study group to lift her sister in prayer, and she gave me a sigh of relief. It is so crystal clear that everyone is searching for comfort and reassurance that someone is listening to their cries and cares. Sunday, February 28th, Academy Awards night. Jerry and I arrive at a local gala party. Some of the guests we personally know, and many just casually. I sat to, next to a lovely couple that I always enjoy being with. They introduced us to a couple they brought to the party. We discovered through conversation that we all love dogs, especially fluffy white ones. We exchanged photos of our Bichons, Maltese, and Havanese puppies. This new couple had a Maltese, and I began to share how my Maltese, Princess, was instrumental in locating my cancer tumor. Princess, my 14-year-old Maltese's persistent evening behavior, got me to pursue the possibility that I should go to a doctor. After my initial doctor's visit, everything quickly unfolded. At this time, I was preparing for our Father's Day celebration. I was fully aware that our pastor had prepared a wonderful message for Father's Day. 
but I needed my church to lift me and my family in prayer because I was going in for surgery Monday morning after Father's Day, and the only one that knew was Jerry, my husband. I hesitantly left a message on Pastor's answering machine on Friday night expressing my desire to not spoil the joy of Father's Day message that he had prepared, but perhaps at the end, a simple request to lift our family in prayer. Saturday morning arrived very quickly when you have a restless night's sleep. Our phone rang around 8.30 to 9. I jumped out of the shower dripping wet and Pastor asked what my plans were for the morning. I explained we were all preparing to leave and spend the day at the beach. Pastor's reply was, Maggie, I have approximately 40 men here that are willing to wait for you and your family. We want to cover you in prayer and believe in God's miraculous healing. We all arrived shortly. Me, Jerry, our son Jonathan, and our new daughter, Elizabeth. We literally were circled in love, lifting our arms and voices, humbly praying for God to save my life. As I am sharing this story, the husband is sobbing, wiping tears from his cheeks. Surprise, the people still do demonstrate kind-heartedness, unconditional love, and believe in miracles. I ended this conversation with sharing my love for the Lord and that His forgiveness, mercy, and grace are for all that ask Him in their hearts. Later, I was asked by a guest, what was I talking about that touched this man's heart? My reply, our mutual love for dogs and my love for Jesus and how He healed me. Wednesday, March 2nd. For years, I have kept a postcard of a sweet portrait of a scruffy, dirty little boy bowing his head in Thanksgiving prayer. I met my new friend, who is an artist, who said she would like to see the picture and talk about the possibility of her taking on the challenge of painting this for me. We visited her for quite some time, sharing our family memories, experiences, hardships, and the influences that have made us who we have become today. Of course, I tearfully told of my love for the Lord. After we had visited for two hours, she asked me to see the picture, but before she actually saw the picture, she expressed that she had lost the desire to paint. She still wanted to meet me, but promised me no guarantees. Well, as soon as her eyes saw the picture, she looked me directly in the eyes and said, you have given me a reason to want to paint again. We hugged later and I encouraged her that I knew she was the artist I needed for this task. I reminded her all she was recreating was the purity and the innocence of a child's love and reverence for God. She ha now had renewed faith and hope in herself that her talent would return with this project. Every day in my life is unique. Some days bring lovely surprises and other days I need to be still and listen. And yes, there are days I can hardly wait for the day to end. The Lord is in control and He goes before us to prepare the way for us to be a blessing to those He brings into our lives. It truly is not me. It's the Lord preparing hearts and arranging circumstances to bringing us together. We bring people together through demonstrating love, helpfulness, kindness, humility, and encouragement towards each other.